Once the cutter head stuff is situated, there is what I can only describe as a chip breaker, I'm assuming, similar to like a chip breaker or a cab iron on a hand plane. So this is a Grizzly replacement off of their website for one of their machines. And I just had to kind of ease the corners a little bit. Uh, it was more kind of straight line on the sides. I just kind of had to clip a little bit off. It might be because of the quality of the casting or lack thereof on my machine. But, I mean, it fit either way. Otherwise, you could always make your own too. What this one had originally come with was like a little chipboard piece that had been kind of cut in the right uh, size with the right holes and stuff for it. And then there's a bevel on the inside edge down there. So the idea behind this is you set it about as close to the cutter head as you can get without actually hitting it. And it'll be a way for the chips to get deflected up and out of the machine. And then there's just three bolts that hold that in place up here. I'm replacing these, most of these with, they used to just be hex bolts and I'm going with these like socket cap, I guess they're not socket cap, they're button head. Um, just because one, I like them a little bit more and two, it should help to be just a little bit less of a spot for chips and stuff to get caught up on when they are exiting the machine. So next thing that I'm going to do is I've got two pieces of the uh, dust chute or chip chute or whatever you want to call it. And I've added some of this foam like gasket tape type stuff. And so the original when I had it first disassembled had a piece here. So it was kind of like a, it was a different kind of foam. It was more of a spongy type foam that went across here and that'll ride on the chip deflector inside the machine. But I just decided to add it all the way around the outside of where the screw holes are just to see if I can cut down a little bit on any of the metal, metal vibration or anything like that. I, I mean, I don't think it'll hurt anything. It squishes down pretty far. So, and then I just added some similar pieces on this part to effectively do the same, I hope. So, these two I'm gonna to put together because there's three screws up here that go through there. And I don't think I want to try and do that by going th through here to try and hold the nut while I'm doing all that. So I'm going to take care of that now. First what I'm going to do here is the one that holds power cord. All right, so there was the one shared screw from, or shared bolt from the power cord clamp, and then there's one back here in this corner, kind of behind the motor and in front of the pillar here. And then there's this one back here. And then there's one up here. Oops. And then there's th three across the back here. One finishing touch is to put all of the rubber post caps on. One for each of the posts that doesn't have the hand wheel. And now, I think we wheel it over to where I can hook it up to the dust collector and run some stuff through it. I will say one thing for sure, it is going to be a little bit different from my old one because my, with my Parks planer, it was actually up 
a lot higher. You can kind of maybe see it out there in the background. And so it was able to, for the most part, clear my table saw outfield, my table saw outfeed table. And so for, I mean, most of the work I did, anything that was under a lot, about two inches, two and a half inches, I could usually be able to plane it without having to move it out of its little spot right here, where I used to be able to just send it right through, come out over top of the outfeed table, and then a lot of times I would just pull it off the planer, shove it off to the side, leave it on the outfeed table, and just keep running through stuff. I would stack stuff up over here on the wing of the uh, radial arm saw stand and just kind of repeat, you know, bounce from over on the outfeed table to over on the radial arm saw, just back and forth as I, you know, fed stock through. But this one, not a chance that's going to happen. I mean, that's, the table is way, way lower. So going to have to either figure out some slight rearranging and figure out how I'm going to do that. Or I might just end up having to, you know, pull it out like this and just run it that direction. And when the camera's not here, I can actually angle it so it's basically parallel to the wall instead of pointing, you know, kind of underneath the joiner wing. But I just want to get it set up, hooked up to some dust collection, and we shall run a board through it. Alright, so obviously this is it. I got the mobile base in and I put a little piece of plywood down there and painted that the same color as the planer. And I got a new badge, so I did end up getting that badge. It is a replacement that is pretty much a carbon copy. The only difference is the other one was kind of a metallic and this is sort of a vinyl printed on a piece of aluminum. And it was done by somebody that I actually found through somebody else's post on Facebook, but it's somebody that shares a lot of the stuff on Instagram. So I'll throw his name up here on the screen for you. Anybody that's interested, you can try and contact him through that. It was pretty reasonable and pretty easy to work with. We had a little bit of a misstep, so I've actually got a second one <laughs> up here over on the wall. And that, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but it ended up being a little bit too big. Uh, it was wide enough, but it was too tall. And so... Anyway, got the second one here, got the drive screws for that. I decided to paint that depth of cut indicator right there the same color as the chip breaker, Alice Chalmers Orange, and got that installed. When you lower down the cutter head in the top assembly far enough, it was pretty easy to access that to be able to get those drive screws in there and get that thing installed. And then after that, there's just two little screws in the top and bottom here. So there's one up here. And then there's one somewhere down around in here, so you can have to raise it a little bit. But I essentially just made a bunch of cuts on a board, eventually found, you know, exactly where it was dimension wise. And then you just kind of move that sliding scale on the post until it lines up correctly. And that was it. Pretty easy. One final piece to this were the knobs. There was two locking knobs, one here and then one on the opposite corner for kind of locking this in place. And I was missing one of those and a buddy of mine was actually able to make me a set. And so now I've got that all buttoned up as well. And that was pretty much the final piece for this thing. And now, there she stands. Everything else is rocking. I've been using this thing for a couple of months now off and on. And it is really, really nice and I am pretty dang happy with it.